issue of Fashion Classics, a nostalgic feeling takes hold over New York's designers, resulting in a retro feel to the Fall Winter 2004 collection. Michael Kors pays tribute to the glamorous stars of yesteryear. So this is sort of my homage to the paparazzi prince and princesses. Anna Sui plays by her own rules, and for Paul, a vintage vibe prevails. She just does her own thing, and she always has, and that really free, hippie style, and that's what keeps us coming back. Designers share with us their strangest job. Anybody who wants to be a fashion designer, stay away from uh, forklift driving it. And new face Heather Marks reminisces about her hometown. It's a lot more laid back, like, I mean, where I'm from particularly, fashion isn't the biggest thing. Mark Jacobs managed to put his memories to good use. We kind of very much borrow liberally from clothes we all remember wearing, we remember our teachers wearing, our babysitters wearing, our friends wearing, etc. And, you know, then we make them our own. And more next. At Michael Coors, the glamorous globetrotters and celebrity hounds were backstage. The beauty teams took note of this ultra chic crowd. It's the jet set thing that Michael likes. So, well, it's all the fantasia of the jet set. They're tan, they're always tan. Michael's girls you know, follow the sun. No reason not to be tan. And then some kind of candy combination on the eye. There's a like a sort of coral pink that's slightly shiny on the lid. And the brow bone has a, like a white gold. And those are nice kind of like bright contrasts to the tan skin. And then a violet gloss on the lip with a little pearl highlight on the top. Well, for the hair, um, it's inspired by um, women like Patty Hansen, Kate Moss, Frankie Rader. They just have uh, their own texture to their hair. It's kind of a bit wavy, and they don't really brush their hair. It stays a little clumpy. And they dress up, and then they have this kind of disheveled look, and it looks really cool, and that's the look for today. It's just a great compliment. Well, I'm, it's pretty cool. Well, I've been a friend of Michael's for a while. It's about time. <laughs> While legendary paparazzo Ron Galela scored a front row seat alongside his precious prey, Michael Poor sent out a fall winter collection that would keep the jet set looking non-stop cool. Today in today's world, you know, probably the most arresting images to me are paparazzi pictures. And, you know, we see celebs going to the grocery store, having lunch, you know, on the red carpet, but at every point in their lives, at airports, um, and the, sort of the grandfather of all that is Ron Galella. Ron is actually coming to the show today. He's shooting the show. Well, I, I'm flattered. I, I, this is something new. I, I never got a front row position on the runway. It's great. I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't expect it. So this is sort of my homage to the paparazzi prince and princesses. The whole thing is very eclectic, um, you know, that it's mixing something that's very luxurious, maybe with something dressed down, mixing something bulky with something floaty, um, or taking something classic like chiffon, uh, but treating it in a sporty way. A little LA mixed with New York, um, so it's a little bit laid back. They're just so, you know, the clothes are so comfortable and casual and beautiful. Great colors, you know, it's good colors for me. I love Michael Kors because he makes clothes that you can actually wear all day long and all evening. And lots of fashion designers make beautiful clothes, but they're completely unwearable, apart from for like a couple of hours in the evening. But you can put on a pair of his pants, your legs look amazing. You put on the cashmere sweater. It's luxurious and it's sexy and it's really, really classy. You look glamorous, but you're warm and cozy. You know, a lot of people think that luxury means a ball gown. And to me, luxury is sort of something that you can live with every day. It's very sort of lifestyle in that it is really sort of a collection that is for every point in someone's life. You know, whether it is, you know, red carpet or it is going to the grocery store or getting on a plane, it's, it's the whole package.
meet 15-year-old Canadian beauty, Heather Marks. Here she is at the start of her successful career, and she's already a fashion classic. There's an agent back in Canada where I'm from who came up, scouted me, and kind of asked me if I wanted to model. That was actually a couple of years ago, and I wasn't really interested. And then come May, I was kind of, you know, I had just got my braces off. It's ready. So, started. I still live in Canada. Well, I mean, I go, I'm there as much as I can be, which is still not very much, but I work mostly in New York and Paris. And I like to go back home, go see my friends, you know, be a normal kid, just hang out. I snowboard when I'm back home because I, I live in Calgary, which is right beside the Rocky Mountains, so. It's a lot more laid back, like, I mean, where I'm from particularly, fashion isn't the biggest thing. I guess everyone, when they think modeling, you know, they think glamour, and it's a lot harder than I ever thought it would be. It's, you know, you work such long hours. Today it's all high tech. You definitely get really lonely. You know, when you're working such long hours, you go back to your hotel or wherever you're staying, there's no one there. You know, you kind of get sick of talking to your family and friends over the phone. Today it's all high tech. It gets hard sometimes, but it's, it's good, it's fine. I, you meet so many great people. It's, you know, an experience of a lifetime. I mean, I don't know how long I want to do it. I kind of, anything can happen in this business, right? I mean, you can be the big thing one day and then the next. You know, not getting any bookings. I definitely want to finish school at some point, but kind of just, you know, play it by year, see what happens. It's kind of, you never know what to predict in this career, so. Known for his sexy designs and wild use of color, Matthew Williamson decided to start down a different path for fall. At least for the first half of the show. The collection is called Wildest Dreams, um, and it's really about the contrast of very, um, very appropriate winter pieces, lots of oversized coats with hoods and fur, um, and lots of chunky knits and very textural pieces. And then underneath all those cocooning pieces, there's a very fragile, delicate quality to the dresses that are, that are underneath. So I basically played with those two ideas. In the first half of the show, it's very um, cocooning and quite soft, structured. The, the, the tailoring is very floppy and almost collapsed. And then toward the end of the show, it gets much more fairy tale like and empire line dresses with lots of fabric, quite full dresses. It's very relaxed, it's very casual. It's not dressed up, it's not. Um, overtly glamorous, it's much more cool and, and just a, a sort of casual attitude. Cool and casual clothes go glam with seductive hair and makeup. Sexy, very sex, very feminine, um, 70s rock chicky kind of gorgeous you know like a real Matthew Williamson type of girl what you imagine she is that's what we're doing the makeup is just sort of like a very kind of like sexy sort of smoldering like a like a sort of dovey dove gray meets a sort of torpy bronzy brown sort of smouldering, blended all the way around the eyes, so with no hard edges, not to really look like heavy eyeshadow or too, you know, too done. The colours are quite subdued, I think, to what I normally do. I'm known for quite bright, fluorescent colours, and there is a little bit of that, but for, for the most part it's quite muted, so lots of olive greens and burgundies and sort of natural colours. It was inspired by a rose, like the, the, the soil of the earth, the stem, and the, and the pink of the rose book. Overall, there is something in the collection.
collection for every woman. The piece has been put together in a way that I hope women will want to wear. They're really quite sort of um, believable and realistic propositions. There's nothing that's too far removed from everyday life. So it's quite easy to put together. At her New York studio, Anna Sui discussed her fall winter collection, one of the best received shows of Fashion Week. I have a great job because I can use everything that I'm interested in in my work. And that's kind of how I put together a collection. Inspired by everyone from surrealist designer Elsa Scaparelli to illustrator Christian Berard, Anna Sui's collection was a never ending groovy celebration. A bit Alice in Wonderland mixed with her signature vintage vibe. And it just keeps getting better and better. I think it's an absolutely terrific collection. Those clothes are just superb. They're young, they're fresh, they move. They're much more sophisticated than I think people realize. They have such movement and such energy and such life to them. They're technically fascinating. The colors on them are terrific. I, I, just, I just think it's just knockout stuff. If you think about the beginning of the show, it's this print and Naomi's outfit that was in this, the ribbony kind of thing. I draw some of the outfits so I can kind of see how I want to put them together. Anna has like a really uh, worldly look of clothes. She's not like safe. She goes and does what she wants and I love her braveness and her boldness. I admire that a lot. This was on Carmen Cass with the magenta sweater. So yeah, all of this was like the beginning of the show and then it flowed into this where there were the, the beautiful like Lurexy striped chiffons and the satin burnout that was mixed with the leopard coat. One key fabric this time was the jacket that Elise Crumbe wore that was kind of purple and orange and black tweedy with like the passementry trim on it. To me that looked like a Christian Berard drawing. It looked like a Vertez drawing and, and it just became like the symbol for the collection and I kind of like expanded from there. Here's the, the drawings which are some of the outfits that you saw in the show. So that, that gives me an idea of how I want to put the outfit together when I start drawing it, to see if the shoes work, getting an idea about hair. Crimped hair, very full, very ethereal, uh, kind of reminiscence of the 70s of the Warhol period. You'll see inspirations of the Warhol superstars like Donna Jordan and Jane Forth, Hollywood Lawn, and Jackie Curtis, which as I was watching all the different Warhol films, I would like remember magazine clippings and like cut them out and put them up. Anna's great. I mean, you know, she has her, she's developed her own world. It's also a lot of clothes for every woman. I loved her collection. It was one of my favorites of the week. Things that I'm interested in, I can just add it into the collection, as long as it you know, still tells the same story. She's not kind of worrying about, you know, I've got to dress the ladies who lunch, or I've got to think about the red carpet, I've got to think about you know, that important premiere. She just does her own thing, and she always has, and that really free, hippie style, and that's what keeps us coming back. My strangest job was that I was the nighttime manager at a tennis club. I don't know, was that weird? When I went to school in Chicago, I worked for a woman who designed NBA mascots. I sold peanuts at Shea Stadium. For real? For real. That was my first job. I was a peanut vendor at Shea Stadium because I love baseball. And I got to see every game. When I was 15, I worked in the mailroom at the William Morris Agency. I wanted to get a summer job and, you know, at 15 you really aren't supposed to be working. but. Um, because my uncle was, uh, 
had a very powerful position. Through nepotism, I got a job in the mailroom. I was a forklift driver in a, uh, in a lifting um, wheels for cars. So I used to drive a forklift. It was freezing, and I had to be sitting out there waiting for trucks. And I, you'd be sitting in the forklift waiting, and you know, and it was your turn, you know. And that was horrid. I had to say that was probably the worst job. So don't anybody who wants to be a fashion designer stay away from uh, forklift driving. Also, I was one of those people who cold calls people on the phone when I was a teenager. I was one of those people you hang up on. Oh God, I called, I had to call businesses. I was like 17. I had to call businesses and sell them like cleaning products. It was horrible, it was horrible, but I was actually pretty good at it. I hang up on them, isn't that terrible? But when I go to a tennis club, I'm nice to everyone. The weirdest job was probably my first job in fashion. I was an intern for actually Narcissa Rodriguez when I was in school. And my job was to send faxes actually. And I was very young and I had no idea how to use a fax machine and Narcissa had to teach me. So, you know, people always think, you know, you work for a designer and you know, what great creative skill have you learned? But really the most important skill I think Narcissa taught me was how to use a fax machine. <laughs> While work on both his signature collection and Louis Vuitton must utilize Marc Jacobs' creativity, where he's really able to express his childhood roots and passion is with his younger line, Mark by Mark. Here, people watching takes on a new meaning for the runway. It would be like if you were in this great city, like this fantastic city, and you just uh, were sitting and you just watched all these amazing kids pass you by. You know, they each one have their own different look and their own different outfit. And it, you know, there's a sense of the street that way, I think. It's like, when I get dressed, I put on clothes in a certain way, and when my friends do, they all, they all have their own way of getting dressed. And that one look per person, I think, always gives that sense of, like, not a fashion show. One look for girls, so they're just kind of like little characters. There's an, I'm doing just enough that it kind of ties them together in terms of the casting. We've got young natural girls, you know, they ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm not really changing the way they look so much. They have um, some of the girls, the girls with darker hair tones have black pencil and mascara. The girls with uh, mid-brown to lighter hair tones just have mascara. No real rhyme or reason to that. That's just how I split them up. Each person had their identity and each person has their own sense of style and each person is their own character. So it's like they're fully dressed the way they themselves would dress. Of course, we've dressed them that way and it's like they're walking down the street. The mixing of textures and retro ideas has become a statement for the line. The references are always to certain times and things that, that I like and that we all like, you know, we, we kind of very much borrow liberally from clothes we all remember wearing, we remember our teachers wearing, our babysitters wearing, our friends wearing, etc. And you know, then we make them our own by updating them with our buttons and our fabrics and our prints and all kinds of different stuff. There were some rubber boots, which again I remember my sister wearing when I was very young. They were just like those bright colored sort of rubber boots with like a funny heel about that height. And um, they're very, very inexpensive. And I was very happy about that because I really love the idea of girls running around in the rain in very bright colored rubber boots. What we started out to do was to make a collection of casual clothes that we thought I guess our own, uh, our peers would like and we would like and I think that we've sort of accomplished that and uh, what we continue to do is just sort of, I think, feed that idea, you know, each season we come up with new pieces that, that we think people will, you know, be able to get and have and wear and enjoy. It was a flashback to 80s rockers and the women who loved them backstage at Betsy Johnson. It's Betsy Johnson.
Johnson. The music is punk rock and rock and roll. And so we wanted to do some real rock and roll stuff. It's really simple palette, look. <laughs> simple, it's just pink and black. Different shades of pink and black. This rhinestone is, is actually, um, it's a, you know, it's a fake piercing. <laughs> I wanted the girls to be a bit more evil than they are normally. Normally I do a very sexy look, but this is a bit more like nasty girl. The inspiration is very London, um, King's Road, Camden Town. On brunettes I use blonde pieces and on uh, obviously on blonde I use dark pieces. Just to give a little bit more dimension and you know weirdness in the hairstyle. The girl is tough, she's not gonna smile, she's very sort of like stay there, don't come close to me. Definitely a case of approach these chicks at your own risk. It was more raunch than rock. Betsy Johnson's fall collection was rough, tough, and ready for anything. I think the girls look so beautiful, but I wanted to go a little over the top, edge city this time. I've been pretty for a long time on the runway. It was really tough. The first time I ever wrote on a Model Q card, no smiling. It's kick-ass, tough, raw, rock and roll, and most of all, no smiling. With such an in-your-face attitude, the clothes are bound to get trashed. Betsy sent out dresses of shredded lace, ravaged layers, and tool gone wild. They were party frocks at their naughtiest. It's just like a lot of things, very glamorous gowns. It's more grown up in a way, and it's darker. I've been dyeing a lot of stuff, charcoal grays, and I've been ombreing and... But it didn't stay dark for long. Glittering sequins and vibrant fringe that would make Tina Turner proud hit the runway. Johnson didn't forget the guy. There was a look of weary roadies who had worked one rock show too many. We sold out of my guys, the shirts, Guys, Heart, BJ, I think we sold out of those in two days, but we're remaking them. I like my initials so much better than my name. My name is like so Doris Day, but BJ, and it's very handy to use, BJ. Oh, it's got a lot of glow in the dark. Um, the white glows in the dark, so I'm doing the Billy Idol white wedding kind of look. Like to make each piece like an artistic little trip. The trip ends with cartwheels and cheerleaders galore.